I'm Mike Mandel. I'm a professional graphologist, among other things. I've been doing it since 1993, and I want to show you some really cool things that you can learn about other people from their handwriting almost instantly. And believe me, it really does work. In fact, University of Heidelberg, the Sorbonne in Paris, around the world, handwriting has been verified empirically through thousands of samples as being absolutely indicative as to what the personality is. So you can take this stuff to the bank. Let me show you a couple of quick things. Believe it or not, you already intuitively know a lot about handwriting analysis without being taught. For example, let's look at three quick samples here. We'll look at A and B for three different words or names. Here we have Mike and we have Mike. Which Mike is the more aggressive one or feeling more angry and aggressive? I bet you picked A. Angles show aggression, angles show energy, and with the amount of pressure put on the chalk here, this is an angry, aggressive, forward-moving person, and this person is much more relaxed and laid back. What about the second example, hello? The question is, which one is feeling optimistic and which one is feeling pessimistic? Or which one is up and which one is down, to make it even simpler? If you pick that B is the more optimistic, you're correct, because the upward slope to the writing is a clear sign of optimism and positive attitude at that time, where the way this word drops is an indicator of feeling down or depressed at that moment. And what about the third one, A or B, what and what? The question is, which person is holding their emotions back and which is more outgoing and leaning towards other people? Well, A is holding the emotions back. The back slanted writer pulls their emotions back from other people as a protection. In fact, if the writing is severely back slanted, you're dealing with damaged goods. The person has probably had something severe or unsettling happen in their past at some point. Whereas this has a natural forward slant to the writing and indicates someone who is much more open and outgoing and leaning towards other people. But there's way more than that. A knowledge of graphology, real graphological principles, can make you seem like a psychic to people. I do graphology lectures throughout the university and college circuit, and it always blows people's minds. Students hang around for an hour afterwards to have me look at their writing, and they think I can read their minds. They say, how could you possibly know that about me? Let me give you a couple of examples here. The small letter T. Do you know how high you put the bar, how tall you make the T, and how high you put the crossbar in your T? Tells all kinds of stuff about you. Look. Let's take a word like tell. This is someone who has good self-esteem and they're optimistic as well. How do I know that? Because the bar on the T is higher than that letter E and it goes up on a slight angle as well. Remember the up slant is optimism. And the fact that the bar is high, this shows how high you set your crossbar in life that you jump over. People with distant goals, long, powerful, strength of will to get there are the Donald Trumps of the world. And you can believe me, they have T-bars that are set extremely high and long and aggressively because they are reaching for the goal. The alternative is also true, unfortunately, which is a T-bar that's very low. A T-bar that's low like this, and in this case, it's lower than the letter E. This is not only someone who underestimates their own abilities, but someone who does not believe in themselves. This is the person with low self-esteem. And if you add to this a downward slant to the writing and put the two together, you say, here's somebody with low self-esteem who's depressed as well. And so you just glance at the writing and you see low T-bars and a downward slope and you instantly know that this person, no matter how they present themselves to you, are going through something that is making them feel down about themselves, lack of confidence is showing, and they may be getting depressed as well. Powerful, powerful stuff. Let me show you a couple more. Here's some really cool stuff. And believe me, you're gonna think, how can that possibly be true? Now realize this comes from thousands and thousands of samples. Scientists, information scientists, sociologists, graphologists have looked at thousands of samples to come to these conclusions. Let's look at 10,000 alcoholics and see what their writing has in common. Let's look at 10,000 people who are high achievers and see what their writing has in common. It's done through large numbers, the same as any science, and can we then make predictions based on what we know? And the answer is yes. So here's some stuff that is wacky, but you'll like it. Lower zones. Now, lower zones are where loops go down below the letter. So we have a letter like a G. There's the body of the letter, but there's a loop that goes down and comes back and crosses this imaginary baseline that the letter's sitting on. Do you know the size of that loop tells us all kinds of stuff about you? The bigger the loop, the larger number of friends you need. So a loop like this that's really big, this person needs way more friends than this person. And this person, if that's a G, doesn't really need any close friends at all. 
This person would have one close friend or maybe none. And this person can go it alone when they have to. If they're stuck in a cabin with a handful of books and nobody's around and they're in a snowstorm, they'll be okay. This person will go nuts to use the medical term. They need people around them. Also, the size of the lower loop shows your sexual appetites. These big, huge lower loops mean a strong, healthy sexual appetite and a desire for things, money and stuff, and even food in some cases. But what if the loops go weird like this? That's not a loop at all, and that's a G. Now notice, in order for this to be the actual trait, there must be a point and it must go lashing back to the left. This is what graphologists call the felon's claw. The felon's claw appears in something like 80% of the handwriting of people in the American penitentiary system. This is a sign of manipulation. This is a dangerous trait to have around you. You would never hire a babysitter or go into a business relationship if your business partner had felon's claws. Now remember, you cannot judge people from a single letter with a slip of a pen does not mean they're psychotic. Neither do you go by something written on a blackboard or with a marking pen. It's got to be their typical handwriting and ideally done sitting down comfortably with an unlined sheet of paper and their favorite pen or pencil. You want the conditions to mirror exactly how they would typically write as closely as possible. Having said that though, let me give you a real interesting key about handwriting. Weird handwriting equals weird person. Weird lower zones really weird person. So we already saw the felon's claw, which I said could be in a G or it could be in a Y as well. But what if the lower zone is something like this? Let's make this a G. Oh, look at that twist of the loop. This is scary, scary stuff. And this is where weird sex drives and sexual deviation to the nth degree shows up. The weirder the lower zones, the more bizarre sex the person is likely to be involved in. If you see this in handwriting, you don't know if it's German shepherds or chandeliers or whipped cream. You just hope to God it's not all three. Let me show you one more amazing thing about handwriting that's very cool. The signature. The signature is not your personality. The signature is the personality you present to the world. It's the way you want to be seen. It's a persona. It's not you. So ideally, if you're going into a business relationship or a personal relationship with somebody, make sure their handwriting and their signature look the same. If their handwriting and their signature match, if it looks like their, their signature was just written in their handwriting, guess what? What you see is what you get. There is no persona. You may not like what you get, but you're getting the real deal. If you've got a, a legible handwriting and a completely illegible all over the place signature, the person is making a presentation. They're holding something about themselves back and aren't being completely open about who they are. It's a defense. But here's another thing. If I see the handwriting of a number of people, I can often just distill it with couples to the signature of the husband and wife and determine whether or not their marriage is on the rocks. Just from that. Because if a woman marries a man and takes on his married name, or her married name is his surname, the space she puts between the first name, her name, and her husband's name shows how close they are together in her mind. So if you look at the first one, Susan Greaves, she's married to Mr. Greaves. Look at the space here. You can tell from this, just from this signature, this woman is not feeling close to her husband for whatever reason. Likewise, Jenny Roberts, if she's married, is feeling very nice and cozy with her husband. The signature is showing the two names very close together. But what about Rick Stevens here? Obviously, it's not a married name. It could be, um, he could be a married man. He could be an unmarried man. But from this signature, what do we notice? We see he has scored out his surname just the last name. And when you see that, he would probably justify it and say, well, it's how I crossed the T in Stevens. No, no, no. The reason you do it is because of what's happening unconsciously. He has unconsciously crossed out the family name and has issues either with his dad or his grandfather, someone close who's carrying the family name. He is destroying it in his mind and setting up some distance between him and it. So make no mistake, the writing shows you all kinds of things about the personality. It never lies. And by understanding just a few graphological simple principles, you can make some amazing, amazing discernments about other people and know them inside out. They'll think you are a psychic.